We're going to do something a little bit different on our video this week. At the end of all of our videos, we honor a fallen hero, but this week we're going to do it at the front of our video. Yeah. And it's a little special too because we have some subscribers, you and me along the way. Mm -hmm. They're on Instagram and YouTube, and they, they are friends with uh, a couple who lost their son mm -hmm. in Iraq. His name was Brian Richardson, and he lost his life on March 25th, 2005, uh, during the conflict in Iraq when his unit was attacked. So thank you, you and me along the way, for bringing that to our attention so that we can honor that fallen hero. So we're going to honor Brian really fast, and then we're going to head straight into the video. We are at the Steamboat Arabia Museum. Yes. Steamboat Museum. Yes. I don't really know what to expect. Me either. I don't know anything about the Arabia. We saw it on a flyer. So let's go check it out. We'll let you know if it's cool or not. It should be cool. Yeah. It's sunken treasure. Tars, hurry! <laughs> no, it's not that kind of boat. <laughs> Steamboat. It sank, I think. Yeah. With treasure. Yes. We'll show you. So apparently the story is that this uh, steamboat from 1850 something was traveling up the Missouri River with a bunch of goods and yeah. 20 million pounds worth of goods and, and, and stuff and hit a snag which is a, like a root of a tree that mm -hmm. sank off one of the banks and sank the steamboat. Yeah. It was the first steamboat to sink in the Missouri River. Yeah. And it's Only one casualty in the whole sinking. <laughs> that was crazy. A mule. The mule. <laughs> and the dude lied about it, which was funny about the story because the dude later on who had the mule said that he went down and cut the mule loose, but when they recovered the ship, that line was still attached to the mule. <laughs> so he lied. But it was crazy because this family just uh, pulled their money, decided to do this. Yeah. They heard a story from somebody about. Steamboat said it went down to Missouri and they, they decided to go and look for one and they went to the guy who owned the land because the river doesn't run through there anymore. Uh, they worked on air conditioners and furnaces and I guess one of their clients mentioned something about steamboats that had gone down to Missouri. Yeah. And so it interested him a lot so he went and talked to his brother and his dad and a couple of their friends. Each had their own little part. One guy was an exca excavator, one guy owned a chain of restaurants but they used to store a lot of their stuff. stuff. Yeah, as they, they found, found it. it. They didn't know they were going to find that much stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. they they went to this guy who owned the land where the river used to run, and they told him they thought that it that the boat was still there. And he said some other people had looked for it before. There was like the fourth attempt. Yeah. And no one had ever found it. But he's like, yeah, you're welcome to look. And he had spe one of them had special equipment. Yeah, one of the little detect the detectors. Metal. And so they found it, and it was 45 feet down. They started digging it up in 1988. Uh, they got it all out after a few years of digging, yeah. and they started the cleaning process. All the way to 91, did you say? It took yeah, to all the way to 91. Out. It took to get out, and then so all the stuff that you see in this portion of the video is all the stuff that they pulled out of there, which is insane. It is how much stuff they pulled out of there, and then they had to clean it by hand, like wash it off, preserve it. The, some of it they had to like freeze in blocks of ice. Right. Yeah. Uh, until they could get to cleaning it so that it wouldn't decay. It's insane. All the stuff that they pulled out. It was it's crazy. more insane is that he said they have seven years of cleaning still to do. Yeah, we got to meet one of the guys. We yeah, one, one of the brothers. The yeah. Uh, one of the diggers. And he said they have seven more years, years of cleaning to do. They have that much stuff that they still have to clean and put on display, and they haven't sold any of it. Yeah. It's all on display right here in Kansas City. Everything. Everything you could think of was on this boat. Insane. But he said it was, it was going to, to stock 56 or 57 general stores in the Kansas and Missouri areas yeah. to sell all this stuff. Uh, but they, on that particular trip, 
they didn't hardly download any of it. Yeah. Because they were going to go from Kansas City all the way to St. Louis. St. Joseph, they were supposed to go to St. Joseph. St. Joseph was the first stop. They didn't make it to the first stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were going from Kansas City to St. Three Louis. Three miles on the river. But they didn't even yeah, the, just took off yeah, and all this crazy. stuff. And that's not even all the stuff that was still on the boat. Because you know a lot of stuff was just lost. Yeah floated down the Sounds river, stuff, or some people yeah, found, or whatever, but this is just the stuff that they found. One of the other interesting things is, Leslie asked the, with the, the, the brother, who was one of the diggers, like, were you still working during the time? Yeah. And it was crazy what their, their work schedule. day was. Uh, they still ran their heating and air conditioning business. They got up at 6 o'clock in the morning. 6 to 9 a.m. 6 to 9, they worked on air conditioners or furnaces, and then well, got down to the dig site by 10. 10 to 6. 10 to 6 or 7, he said. Yeah, they yeah. would dig and find stuff. And then they would load up, take about an hour to load up yeah. everything. So about 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock now. And then from that time until... Well, no, he said 8 to midnight yeah. was getting everything unloaded, preserved, put away, preserved, whatever they frozen, had frozen if it needs to be frozen. And midnight... Documented. To, yeah, documented yeah. how much was in each box that they put away. And then midnight to 6 a.m. was their heat. Dinner, and shower. Sleep, sleep and, and then get ready get to do it again. Half a day, do it. half a day off for Christmas, and half a day, and half a day off for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Every other day, full day. <laughs> There's no way I could do that. Anyway, I think you got it rough, but I mean, it's it was dedication, self-inflicted, but that's dedication. It, it, it all pays off. All that stuff downstairs yeah. is just awesome. I mean, but, they, re they uncover history. Yeah, yeah. we. Had a great time here. Yeah, I'm so glad we came. And it was cool. So if you're in the area, come check out the Arabia Steamboat Museum. And it was only how much to get in? We got a little bit of a discount being military. It wasn't much, but uh, I think the regular price is thirteen fifty. Not bad. Thirteen fifty to get in per person. And it's a guided tour, so yeah. it's cool. But lock it up. Okay. We gotta go. <laughs> Today we are at the World War One Museum in Kansas City. Waterfield craters. Three machine guns fire at us at the same time. I can see two of them spitting sparks in the dark on either side of the ravine. I give the order to fire back, round for round. The Germans begin to shower us furiously with big grenades from their trench mortars. They fell with a thud and did not explode until a few seconds after impact. Our observers are trained to distinguish the noise they make on landing and to shout, bomb on the right or bomb on the left. Coated with mud, unshaven, hollow-eyed with the continual strain, unable to reply to the everlasting run of shells hurled at them from three, four, and five or more miles away, positively welcoming an infantry attack from one side or the other as a chance of meeting and imagining themselves against human assailants and not against invisible irresistible machines it was uh more grand than i expected it was huge <laughs> i was trying to think of like a good word <laughs> it was huge and then the monument up there where you could see all the yeah all the, you can all the whole city yeah and uh, all downtown and everything but um what really struck me was when you walk in and you see all the, the poppies uh, the poppies yeah one poppy for every thousand. thousand people who were killed in world war one yeah and there's poppies yeah everywhere i i felt a little selfish selfish yeah Why? and i felt a little bad yeah but as we were walking around the world war one museum i heard I heard people talking in German yeah. and Japanese and I heard some English accents and mm -hmm. some French accents. Yeah. I mean, there was just a, a melting pot of people in there. Yeah. And it didn't strike me until that moment. I'm like, holy crap. It wasn't just our war. This is their history too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds bad. Yeah. But I just never thought of it as their war also. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of German stuff. Yeah, but it was it's cool yeah. that that people can come over here mm -hmm. and visit the World War One Museum from their country, their countries that were involved yeah. in in the conflict, and they can see their history also yeah. or their part of it. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And now 
I'm not going to be as selfish. Mm -hmm. One of the coolest places that we visited when we were in the Kansas City area, which is a hidden gem also, mm -hmm. uh, is in Lexington, which is just outside of Kansas City, and that's where the Battle of Lexington took place. Yeah. I had no idea. I, I was oblivious. <laughs> I thought the Battle of Lexington took place in Kentucky. Uh -huh. I just assumed Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, that's where the Battle of Lexington, but no, no. it was in Missouri. Yeah. And th there was a, a house out there, the Anderson House, and uh, beautiful house. Awesome house. It was like 1840s, 1850s, mm -hmm. and then the Battle of Lexington took place out there, and the owner, who was um, Oliver Anderson, he was like a hemp guy. Yes. He grew hemp and then made ropes, and sold ropes to like commercial companies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he was super rich. Yes. He so he had this huge house out on this, this piece of land right next to the river. The house was built in like a Greek style. I was all going to say wood. Like labor intensive because it was very ornate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even the outside, like the um, the columns, mm -hmm. very eccentric, very high end yeah. stuff. And they had they had stuff that that no one else had. Yeah, um, they had the way that the the tour guide explained it to us was it was designed so that the heat would rise up through the staircase yeah. area. And then dispersed through the house mm -hmm. as it as it rose, and there was fireplaces in almost every, every room. room. Yeah, they were all <laughs> like twenty by twenty mm -hmm. square foot, fifteen foot high <laughs> ceilings, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, every room was the same dimensions. Yeah, and the closets were almost not closets. Well, no, they, tea tiny. They weren't little really places. Closets. Yeah, mostly it was wardrobe closets were used. There was a lot of original stuff in there. Mm -hmm. a, a lot, lot of the of furniture was original. Stuff. Yeah. Um, all of the flooring was original. For a, a, a period piece. Yeah, there were lots Replics. of period pieces yeah. in there, but a lot of it was original stuff. <laughs> they put their girdles on so tight that they they were just expecting to faint, so they had yeah. specific couches made for them to faint on. Mm -hmm. They had a fainting room. Yeah. Um, it was crazy just to see, like, chamber pot. It was cool to see how they cooked. Yeah, the kitchen And the cool. kitchen area. And the really cool part, I think, is all of the fragments that you can still see in the house. Yes. You can still see bullet holes and fragments from cannonballs. Cannon yeah. Yeah. And what the most interesting part to me was, and they used the Anderson house as a hospital. They think that this one room was where they did most of like their surgical Surg yeah. type stuff because there was a couple of little areas there. Um, where they had holes drilled in the floors mm -hmm. and they said that they think that during the surgeries they drilled those holes to drain the blood right. the creepiest thing the hairy the hairy <laughs> was so creepy man there was a couple of them in there yes the hair wreaths are oh they're so creepy it's the hair of dead uh, people yes they take the hair of their dead relatives and they pass the and they make wreaths out of them. And there is, when they were doing some excavating to do some building out there, they found bodies. Mm -hmm. They found a ton of, of Civil War stuff. So the ones that they did find, they just put them in a grave and it's like unknowns. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't know whether they were Confederate soldiers yeah. or Union soldiers. They're just like unknown from the Battle of Lexington. And that's it from Kansas City. And the surrounding area. Because <laughs> we were around a lot. Yes, we did get around in this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just all right there. Yeah. But we hope you enjoyed all the hidden gems. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.